In today's episode, probably one of the most unusual tractors I have ever seen. Have you ever wondered what would happen if you combine an agriculture tractor, telehandler, excavator and tool carrier into one compact machine that would be affordable for all farmers? That was exactly the assumption of Kim Yung Ho, the founder of Robodream and the creator of Roboractor, which is probably the most universal tractor ever created. At first, I thought it is a Chinese invention that it's maybe not worth talking about, but when I explored the topic, it turned out that Roboractor is a project from South Korea and the story behind it seemed so fascinating to me that I decided to make an entire episode about it. Who is Kim Yun Ho? Where did the idea of Roboractor come from? And what does his company flagship machine offer to farmers? All about that in today's episode. Be sure to leave a thumb up and subscription with bell if you like documentaries like this one and would like to see more of them on my channel. And now, without further ado, let's jump into a story. Even when I'm feeling down, I fight Even when I don't know what is right I'ma pick a side and I'ma take pride I will decide my fate and die Will never let them tell me who I am If you try to shake me, I'll be damned Planet on the ground is where I stand Never give up, that was always the plan Meet Kim Yun Ho a Korean dreamer, who I would even call some kind of Korean agriculture Elon Musk. Kim is the creator of Roboractor project, but before he started working on this original vehicle, he was associated with agriculture machinery from childhood. Kim is a farmer by origin. He grew up on a farm owned by his parents, when from an early age he could experience the taste of hard work on the farm. However, what has always attracted him the most was machines. Even when he was in high school, Yang Yun Ho took part in many competitions for inventors, presenting his own patents and modification of agriculture machines. He spent days at the local junkyard, collecting parts and materials from which he later was constructing his machines. During high school, he developed one of his revolutionary designs for an ultra-wide harrow for Rotary Tyler, the design of which he managed to commercialize and put into mass production. I must admit that working with this type of machines on rice plantations is a black magic for me because we don't have rice fields in Poland, but from what I was able to understand, his project was about adding an additional white harrow to the rotary tiler, which would additionally level or cultivate the area behind the machine. In 1995, Kim founded his own company under the name Deho, which was specialized in the production and distribution of agriculture machinery. His ultraweight hero solution quickly gained huge popularity on the local market and also began to be exported outside Korea. Today, Daeho has almost 50% of the market share in South Korea and is the leader in rice field machinery, selling approximately 5,000 machines per year. The commercial success of the Haro brought Kim not only fame, but also a great financial result. However, Kim did not plan to waste money and he decided to invest all the profits in the development of the company and the implementation of one of his dreams, creating his own tractor. The Ultra White Harrow was not Kim's only invention. Later, he also worked on rice harvester attached to the tractor, which was supposed to be much cheaper and more affordable for small farmers. He managed to build a working prototype that even won several prestigious awards, but its commercialization failed. This project turned to be too ambitious and required too much capital, and that's why it was abandoned in a favor of developing the production of tillage machinery. While working on this project, Kim also encountered a lot of technical problems, which made him think that such a combine should be built on the tractor and not attached to the rear. He realized that in order to create something like this, he would first have to develop his own tractor, which he had dreamed of creating for many years. The concept evolved, and so from idea to idea, a new project was born in his head, the Roboractor. Kim started to make his dream come true in 2010. For this purpose, he established a new company called Robodream. The name of the project, Roboractor, comes from, as you probably guessed, the words robot and tractor. 
the association with a robot is not accidental here. That's how Kim himself explains it. Tractors have succeeded in replacing workhorses so far, but no tractor could fully replace human hands. The Roboractor is a new concept that combines an agriculture tractor and a robotic arm. Most people were cautious about Kim's idea and predicted him a quick fall. And it isn't really surprising. Building an innovative tractor from scratch is a really big deal, and his company, although dynamically operating, is a small plant employing something about a hundred people. How does this apply to large corporations such as John Deere or CNH? Despite this, Kim decided to bet on his own, which resulted in Roboractor. So, Roboractor is an interesting combination of a farm tractor, loader, forklift and even excavator functionality. The first prototype left the factory in 2010. The development of this design will take a lot of time. In the meantime, the machine itself will be rebuilt over 100 times. The engine itself has been replaced 10 times. Finally, the production version of the first model was made. The heart of the Roboractor is a very economical 4-cylinder Hyundai engine generating 105 horsepower. But it's not the power that plays the first fiddle in Roboractor, but its unusual design. The tractor is equipped with a rotating arm that allows tractor to be used as a loader or even excavator. Kim says that Roboractor's arm has a similar range and performance to a 5-ton conventional excavator. The hydraulic pump supplying the system has a capacity of 180 liters per minute. What's more, the arm can also be used to attach machines or additional equipment, all thanks to use of an innovative quick coupler. The constructor also paid a lot of attention to the stability of the machine. The suspension of the Roboractor works similar like in the single bucket excavators. It can go up and down, as well as lock in one position when working with the arm, and it also provides high stability on the road. The arm can also be used in critical situations when the tractor gets stuck in mud. All you have to do is use your arm to help you get out of trouble. Let's take a look at the interesting design of the front axle. This is a very similar solution that you could see in, for example, Belarus tractors. A typical tractor has a string angle of 50, maybe 60 degrees. The Roboractor, thanks to the use of the specially redesigned front axle, has a turn of as much as 100 degrees, which allows it to turn almost at the spot, like for example Bobcat skid steer. The interior of the cabin is rotatable. Just like for example in fence tractors, the steering column, seat and control panel can be turned 180 degrees. This allows operator to comfortably use the arm while digging or to use a machine, for example mower, attached to the three-point linkage at the back of the tractor. The tractor reaches a maximum speed of over 53 km per hour and as the manufacturer emphasizes, it is extremely stable compared to the classic construction of a farm tractor. At the moment of recording this video, 72 Roboractor tractors have been delivered to farmers in South Korea since the beginning of production. At least, that's what I was able to determine, but I don't know if this is up-to-date information. Maybe it's not an impressive number, but the project is still in development stage and Kim's manufacturing capabilities don't allow much larger production either. Kim is much more focused on refining and developing his design then on quickly introducing Roboractor to mass production. We still have a long way to go, but I'm grateful to everyone who trusted us and bought our tractor. When asked about his plans for the future, Kim focuses primarily on the development of the Roboractor structure, but also plans even larger projects. He dreams about making an autonomous version of Roboractor that could work on rice fields without the participation of an operator inside the cabin. I wonder what do you think about the Roboractor project? Personally, I am a big fan of Kim's concept and I keep my fingers crossed for its further development. I would like to have such a universal machine on my farm. However, a lot of people will probably say that if something is good for everything, it is good for nothing. And unfortunately, there is a lot of truth in this claim. The Roboractor will probably not be as efficient as a classic tractor, nor will it be as outstanding as a dedicated excavator or loader, but it is all about closing many functionalities in one machine and it cannot be done without making some compromises. 
it's clear that with a dedicated excavator you will dig a trench faster, a specialized loader will probably also be able to lift more and a large tractor with a classic design will have a better towing capacity, but this is not the point here. For agricultural applications, on a small farm the possibility of having one universal machine for everything is in my opinion so great that you can ignore the inconvenience associated with it. And that's all for today's episode. I hope you liked my video. If so, be sure to leave a thumb up and subscription with a bell under it to make sure you that you don't miss any of my new videos. I also invite you to check my previous videos about history of interesting tractors and heavy machinery. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye.